It is our differences that attract us to each other. And then they drive us crazy. <laughs> and a lot of the struggle that happens in relationships is fundamentally trying to get you to be like me. Why can't you be like me? Why can't you be more like me? Why can't you think and act and respond like me? Because he ain't you, that's why, <laughs> all right? And we, we start really fighting fundamentally who they are. It is the craziest thing. There's something wrong with all of us. I don't know what it is. But we, we feel that difference. We go, oh, there's something really special about that person. Yeah, you know what it is? They're the exact opposite of you. <laughs> you finally found someone who's just the flip side of the coin and go, oh, yes, yes, yes. And there's that sense of completeness, you know, because, you know, together you guys make a good person. All right? <laughs> but... <laughs> because we're all a little unbalanced. We need that person to balance us out. But then we get married and oh man, it just starts driving us crazy. Now, what I've discovered is most couples don't understand what those differences are. They know there's something there, but they don't really get it. And, and, and we start fighting against fundamentally what the other person loves the most about life. Because what they love the most about life is usually not what we love the most about life. And couples have a real hard time expressing these feelings and these emotions and, and, and finding a way of clarifying just exactly who they are on the inside. And we've developed a program that helps couples to do this. It's called The Flag Page. And it was written by a, a good friend of mine, Larry Bellotta, a brilliant man who discovered the key to helping people succeed is showing them what's right about them, not what's wrong with them. So much of our efforts to help people starts with the premise, well, let's find out what's wrong with you. A lot of couples counseling is, let's focus on what's wrong with you. Uh, now, I don't know how many of you are aware of this, uh, and if you're a counselor or something here, uh, you know, don't, and, and you have a different result, don't get mad at me or throw anything. But the truth of the matter is, most people are not aware of it, but most counseling fails miserably. By and large, they have an 80% plus failure rate. Can you imagine going to a doctor where 80% of the people came out dead? <laughs> That's contemporary marriage counseling, marriage therapy. And I'll tell you what, churches, pastoral counseling, marriage counseling, isn't much better. Some of them, it's equally as bad. That's why a lot of pastors hate doing it. They, as soon as the church gets big enough, they hire somebody else to do it. <laughs> <laughs> because it sucks the life out of them and it's frustrating and they're not succeeding and they don't, ah, and they, they want to give up on the deal. We, the, the, one of the reasons why they struggle and fail so much is because the premise is wrong. They start focusing on what's wrong with you. You know, they bring in a couple and say, okay, well, what's wrong? Well, why is that wrong? Don't you think it's wrong to do what's wrong? <laughs> it's like trying to lose weight by thinking about food all day long. <laughs> they're focused. We have discovered if you get people to discover what's right about them, they come alive. It changes the dynamic. And while so many people have an 80% failure rate, using this approach, we have discovered an 88% success rate with couples. No one was more shocked than I, because I was like a lot of other ministers. You know, ministers, we do marriage counseling by default. You know, they come to their minister, they want, they want help, and okay, you know, we get like one class on it kind of thing, you know, and <laughs> we typically just beat you over the head with the Bible, you know, and then hope you, you hope you change. But uh, so, uh, you know, I failed just like everybody else. And when we started using this approach, the turnaround in couples' lives, and I just went, wow, this is absolutely amazing. And, and, and we continue to fine-tune and develop this program, and we use it with couples all across America, all over the world, actually, to help them discover what's right about them. We call the program the Flag Page. And this program is a very unique program. It's, it's, uh, I don't know how many of you have ever taken a, a personality test or anything like that. Uh, they ask 250 questions and stuff, and I hate those things as much as you do. Uh, that's not what this is. This is not a personality test. We don't care about your personality twisted as though it may be, okay? <laughs> this program focuses on one thing, and that is what do you love about life? What is important to you? That's it. We try to measure passion, all right? Now, 
Uh, it's a test that you do online. You go on the computer, you go online, you enter a code. You don't have to purchase this little code. And you enter the code, and then you can go in and do the program. The program consists very simply of three steps. It's so simple. When I first took it, I thought, this is stupid. It can't possibly be accurate. And I was blown away by the results. But the three steps are very simply. Number one, it gives you a list of words. And then you simply click all the words you believe describe you. Now, this is not what you wish you were. <laughs> all right? Because a lot of you girls, you go, oh, I wish I was that. I wish I was that. I wish I was, you know. Uh, you know, it'll, you'll just look like somebody else is all it is, okay? You'll look like what you wish. We don't care about that. Don't think in those terms. This isn't what you wish you were. This isn't what your mama told you you had to be, okay? This is yes, that describes me, yes or no. Boom. You pick the ones. You click a button. You go to step two. You rate on a scale of one to ten how specific words make you feel. You know, 10 makes, it, feels, makes me feel great, one not so good, five in the middle, whatever. Then you get step f three, where you prioritize those, uh, the ones that are the most important to you. You push the button, and then in seconds, you get this printout. We call it the flag page. On this program, it'll show you why you act the way you act, why you react the way you react, where you're most likely to succeed in life, and most importantly, the five things that you love the most about life. Now, let me explain very briefly just the top portion of it. That's the most powerful part of it. Uh, and, and we're going to start with this area in the corner here that shows these, these pictures. What we do, the first thing this thing does is breaks you into four temperament categories. Control, fun, perfect, peace. We call them countries. Fun country, control country, perfect country, peace country. Why? Because it's like coming from different countries. Different countries have different tra traditions. Different countries have different ways of looking at things. Um, I used to use the analogy of like someone from China trying to relate to someone from Yugoslavia or something. But we discovered a really better example is like someone from the United States trying to relate to someone from England or from Australia or from South Africa. Why? Because we all speak English. We assume there's a general assumption we understand each other. But if you've ever been in these countries, you can find out in a hurry different words mean different things. And you can insult people very, very quickly. Uh, we were in England some years ago, and I met this young couple, and they had this little boy about two years old, a little toddler running around. I love kids, and I'm goofing around with this little kid. And at some point, I said, come here, you little bugger, and I'm reaching to grab him. All of a sudden, the parents grab his hand and just storm out of the room. I was stunned. I looked at the guy next to me. I said, so what happened? He said, well, over here, a bugger is a homosexual. <laughs> Well, that's not what I meant, okay? And when I told the couple, I apologize. You know, I'm sorry. That's not what I meant. That's not what it means where I come from in Wisconsin, all right? But you know what? They didn't care. They didn't care. They stayed offended. They stayed upset because you don't do that in our country. I don't know how many of you uh, follow little political things, but when the first President Bush went over to Australia. He was in a motorcade, and he was waving at the crowd, and he was using some hand gesture. I don't remember what it was. But over there, it's the equivalent of flipping everybody off. <laughs> it's like going down the crowd. Hey, I know what you're going to say. You know? And, and uh, all, the, all the people got upset and offended. And of course, he had to apologize later because over there, that's what that means, but not where we come from. And it's like that from these emotional countries. We have our way of viewing things. We have words that mean certain things, and we're motivated by different things than people from other countries. And inevitably, people seem to marry people from completely opposite countries. Uh, <laughs> not always, but, but a lot of the times, it's very, very funny to watch. Now, let me give you a quick breakdown on these four countries. First of all, we have the uh, square, black and white country of control. <laughs> these are the people who just want to get her done. They need to get her done. Just get her done. All right, their favorite vehicle is the bulldozer. <laughs> they just hop on that bulldozer and plow everybody over to get something accomplished. You know, and they just rah. They're focused on what they're doing, not who they're killing while they're doing it. <laughs> because their greatest desire in life is they want appreciation for what they do. 
They want appreciation for it. They want to, I want you to appreciate me. I told you last night how men like to be appreciated. Men like this really want to be appreciated. But there's women like this too. They just, they want appreciation for what they do. Now, these people generally, uh, depending on how passionate they are about it, they're so strong about it that the last thing in the world you want to do is appreciate them. <laughs> right? In fact, we'll say things like, dear God, don't appreciate him. <laughs> right? So we all, the rest of us from other countries, feel it's our God-given responsibility to deny them what they want the most. <laughs> and then we wonder why people get upset. We wonder why they feel depressed. We wonder why people feel struggle in life. Why? Because what they desire the most is being forbidden to them by everybody closest to them in their lives. You're not helping your spouse by denying what they want. It'll seem odd to you because you don't want it. I mean, to, to all of us, you know, that's weird. And in every country, they each have something that to the rest of us seems weird. But to them, it's, it's breath and life to them. These people want to be appreciated. Uh, they like words like grasp, control, get her done, appreciate, accomplish, achieve. That's the world that they come from. All right? Then the next one is we have the star-shaped country of fun. Guess where I come from? All right? Now, these are the people, they just want to have fun. <laughs> you know, just, we love it. And uh, um, our favorite vehicle is the jet plane. <laughs> High speed, no limits. Of course, we're famous for smashing into walls and, and not seeing where we're going. <laughs> and of course, we think it's hilarious. You know, and then we just get up and take off again. <laughs> and it's not so funny to your spouse, who's tired of seeing you smash into walls all the time, right? But we don't care. Our greatest desire is, look at me, look at me, look at me, look at me, look at me. We love to be noticed. Fun people love to be noticed. Their favorite environment is being noticed in a crowd of people. Just, look at me, look at me, look at me, look at me. That's, that's fun people. That's why they'll share horribly embarrassing situations that, that you would never share. It's true. Why can they do that? Because we just look at me. We don't care. Look at me, look at me. Look at me, look at me. I was in Ohio, and I got on one of these shuttle buses, you know, from the airport to the uh, rental car thing, and this lady hops on the bus, and she's just loud. You know, fun people are loud, 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 loud. Why? Look at me, look at me, look at me. And, and she's just talking. The lady's hilarious. She's got us all laughing on the bus. Right, I knew right away what country she came from, you know. <laughs> she's, she was in, in uh, she'd just come back from uh, 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 Rhode Island, which is about the size of a postage stamp and describing how it took her nine hours to get from the airport to her hotel. <laughs> now, it only takes 20 seconds to drive across Rhode Island, but it took them nine hours. To, and she's describing how they kept going in circles and stuff like that, and she thought it was hilarious. <laughs> it's an embarrassing thing. And, I, oh. and then she says, and then we finally got to the hotel, and it was this hotel, and it was so neat, because when we looked outside, it had the biggest, fullest moon we ever saw. It was so beautiful. And she's describing it in, in detail, and she's kind of pulling us all in. And she says, the most amazing thing about it is it never moved all night. It stayed in that same spot. <laughs> and I'm thinking, really? <laughs> and she says, the next morning we got up, we saw it was a big lamp right outside our window. Oh, my God. Oh, so, I felt so stupid. <laughs> you know, it was, Now you realize she's sharing this with complete strangers. <laughs> she doesn't care, all right? She just loves to have fun and loves to be noticed. Uh, we're not real big on details. You know, we're a little scattered brain. We're the kind of people we will go to a shopping mall and we'll come out and we have no idea where the car is. <laughs> a and we think it's hilarious. your spouse is not nearly as entertained by this. <laughs> Highly irritated, okay? And, and what do we do? These people, they want to be noticed. What, all you fun people, what have you heard all your life from people? Oh, God, don't notice them. Don't encourage them. Don't encourage them. So everybody closest to you works the hardest to deny you what you want the most. And if they succeed, you will be depressed.
You will be frustrated. You will not be happy if they win. There's this constant war between the, the countries here. Now look at the words they like to use. Really happy, good time, funny, great. Ha ha ha. Now, a lot of, I, we get a lot of people from Fun Country coming to my event because it's called Laugh Your Way to a Better Marriage. And they just, they're just the title alone, they're in. Ha ha ha. Okay, let's go. <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> and, and, and what are they doing? They're trying to sell everybody by using their words. So if they're married to a control person, they're coming up saying, Oh, come on. You need to come. It'll be really fun. It'll be really great. Oh, oh that's such a blast. But you're speaking Swahili to this guy. <laughs> See? Because not, not, there's not one word you said that appeals to him at all. No, come on, it'll be really fun, it'll be really fun, it'll be really fun. We all like using our own language. And then and we can't even begin to comprehend why the phrase really fun, fun doesn't motivate you to come. All right? If you really wanted to succeed with Mr. Control or Mrs. Control, you would use their language. You'd say, honey, you know, we ought to go to this thing because we'll be able to achieve more in our marriage. We'll be able to accomplish more. We'll be able to get more done and we'll succeed more in our relationship. Now you're talking his language. Do you see the difference? But we don't want to do that. We don't even care what the other language is. We just want to use our language. And it gets us in trouble. So this is important to try and understand. Then we have the people uh, from the diamond-shaped, hard, perfect world of perfect. And these are the people, they just want to get it right. It's just details, details, details. They view the world under a magnifying glass, you know. And, and they're always looking for flaws. And they're always, their way of saying, I love you, is let me tell you what's wrong with you. <laughs> you know what I'm talking. Some of you got that. You, you're always telling your spouse, you know, you, you need to quit doing that. You need to do this better. Why do you, you know, this is their version of love. If they didn't, if they didn't care, they'd let you just burst into flames. They wouldn't care. <laughs> you're about to drive over a cliff. They don't know you. They don't care. Just see you. <laughs> You know, but they love you. They're always pointing out what's wrong and how you can be better. Uh, these people, their perfect, their, their ideal vehicle is the train. That's because unless this rail is exactly, it has to be exactly from the same distance from this rail or the train's not going to move. <laughs> these people are often accused of being control, control freaks. And they're not, and they get mad. If you have a spouse that you say, you're, you're just a control freak, and they get mad at you, I promise you they're not a control freak. They're probably a perfect person. Control people, when you accuse a control person of being a control person, you know what they do? They go, that's right. <laughs> you know, they love it. Rawr, rawr. That's right, I'm a control. Get out of my way, you know. But perfect people are often accused of being controlled, but the reason it feels like they're controlled because they're always stopping the train. They're train stoppers. They're not controllers. They're not trying to control the environment. As control people like to control the environment. They like to do this, do that, put this here, do that. They, they light up with that. But, but, but perfect people, they just want to get it right. That's, that's their desire. Get it right. Let's get it right. Let's get it right. Now, it doesn't mean it is right. It's just right to them. These are the people that if they were on the Titanic, the only thing they would be concerned about is that the furniture stay arranged on deck. The rest of us would be on, we're dying, it's going to sink, who cares? I'm sorry, it's policy. We got to keep these chairs over here because that's, that's, that's what it says in the manual, you know. You ever run into somebody like that? That it seems like for the lack of every bit of common sense in the world, they cannot see it because it's in the manual. That's the way. These are perfect people. They, they make some of the greatest workers in the world because they'll, do, they'll, they'll follow, you know, the, the manual to death, you know. Uh, now, these are by nature the most creative people in the world. Your best architects, your best artists, your best designers, your best musicians. Janet comes from the world of perfect. It's, a, it's her highest score. They take details and they make them come alive. They are creative geniuses. All right? But they are, by nature, the world's most sensitive people. And what they desire more than anything is really not perfection. They just want you to be sensitive to their feelings, which is something you'd, you'd never even connect that. You think, well, they want perfection. They want to view stuff. They want everything. No, no, no. Their greatest desire, sensitivity to their feelings. It really throws everybody because no one picks that up because they're always throwing darts at everybody. That's wrong. 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 Okay? 
and then we try and throw the darts back at them. Okay, it, 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 but they, they don't handle it very well. <laughs> they don't like it. They get their feelings hurt all the time. Perfect people always walk around. They're always hurting all the time. People are always offending them, They're, and they feel things very, very deeply. And a lot of them carry a lot of hurt and pains from even years ago. It's a real struggle for them. Again, they're creative, brilliant geniuses. God loves them, and God made you the way you are. But they have a real hard time letting go of stuff. See, control people. If you offend, offend a controlled child, he'll push past it. You offend a, a fun child, he'll laugh it off. You offend a peace child, he'll make peace with it. You offend a perfect child, and they can carry the pain of that well into adulthood, some of them for the rest of their lives. If you have perfect children, you need to be very careful with them. They're very, very sensitive people. Again, they're brilliant. They're wonderful people, the most misunderstood people. When I'm flying home at 35,000 feet, I'm really hoping the guy who designed that came from perfect country. <laughs> and not from fun country. <laughs> Bad. <laughs> Because all we care about is that it looked cool. <laughs> and if it blows up, we go, <laughs> oh man, did you see that? Oh, oh, let's make another one, you know? So we just. <laughs> they like words like ideal, right, details, feel, that sort of thing. All right? Um, uh, then we have the final country, the, the country of peace. These are the people who just want to get along with everybody. Can't we all just get along? I call it the Rodney King motivation. Can't, can't we all just get along? You know? their, their favorite vehicle is the gondola on calm waters. <laughs> they hate emotional waves. They just hate it. Inevitably, these people marry people who do belly flops in the pool. You know, they just, they just hate it. It drives them crazy. This, this uh, picture of a, a person in a hammock while mowing the lawn, that, that's not laziness to these people. That's efficiency. <laughs> stay calm. Just stay calm. They like words like no hassle, the easy way, relax, low maintenance, smart. You know, they just like doing things, you know, with as little discomfort as possible. Now, these people's greatest desire, the, the control and fun are the easiest to recognize what their desire is. Perfect and, and peace is, is harder. Perfect, I explained to you, but uh, peace people, what the greatest desire is for you to respect who they are. That's what they, that's what they really want. The problem is these are the easiest people in the world to disrespect. It is because they're so nice. And they're so placid and so bendable. They're just... <laughs> and, and when anybody from the other countries run into a peace person, we immediately think, here's a chance for a convert. <laughs> That's what we do. We can get him to the dark side. <laughs> Follow the dark side. Because we think, because they're so nice, they really need what we have. And, and we can bring them to our side. So control people, you know, they, they, they'll come to a peace person and say, you need to get more done in your life. And a peace person will go, okay. <laughs> and a fun person will say, you need to be more excited about life. And they'll go, okay. Perfect person says, You need to get it right. And they'll go, Yes, yes, you're right. <laughs> and you can push them along just so far. These people will all of a sudden shut down on you in a heartbeat. And, 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 the re and it'll shock you to say, What happened? It's because at some point you start disrespecting them and you start insulting them. They'll put up with a lot because they're peace people. By nature, they'll, they'll suffer the slings and arrows of many outrageous fortunes, okay? But you start insulting who they are, they will, they'll shut down you, they'll go cold, they'll get really upset. A control person pushes too hard, she, it makes a peace person feel stupid. You make a peace person starting to feel stupid, they'll really get upset with you. A fun person can make them feel like a dud. You make them feel like a dud, they'll shut down. 
you know, a, a perfect person making them feel like, like a failure. You start making them feel that way, you're insulting them, they will shut down on you. Um, if war breaks out between the other three countries, these people all hide. <laughs> and, and they come out and, and join whoever won at the end. You know, that's... <laughs> which makes the other two want to kill him. Okay, so, so that's the temperament thing. This is just the beginning. This is why you act the way that you act, the way that you approach life. Then what this program does is it measures what we call your, your hard motivations versus your soft motivations. Now, soft means calm, patient, peaceful, low-key, easygoing. Hard sounds bad, but it's not bad. It's great. It's wonderful. Strong-willed, bold, born leader, organized, self-sufficient people. These are wonderful, wonderful people. And uh, sadly, it, you know, in the world that I come from in, in churches, we tend to really favor soft people, you know, and uh, we kind of dislike hard people. But it's very, very unfair because they're both wonderful. You know, God has both in him. Thou shalt not is pretty hard, Right? When Jesus was whipping people and throwing them out of church, that's a little on the hard side. <laughs> All right, but then he also was compassionate and forgave people even their most outrageous offenses. Uh, and that was his soft side. So, you know, while God is perfect, you know, we have varying degrees of all this. And this program actually measures this in you. And it's very, very interesting. Uh, and then uh, we'll, we'll, we'll stop with this part of it. But this is the, what we call the flag, hence the name flag page. And this shows you your top five motivations, the five things you love the most about life. And we do them in order of importance to you. And this is really significant because oftentimes couples not only fail to appreciate what the other person loves, but they criticize it in them. And when you start criticizing what, an other, what the other person loves the most about life, it really causes a great deal of pain. And you start tearing at their heart. We have a phrase that says, don't step on my flag. You know? uh, and the problem is, we all appreciate the things that we love the most. When we see your, your spouse's flag, you don't get nearly as excited about it. You get thrilled by your own, but you look at theirs and go, oh, that's too bad. <laughs> Now, we're going to take a break. When we come back, I'm going to show you. I've got a couple of couples, guinea pigs, that uh, have already taken this program, and I'm going to bring them up on the, up on the stage, and I'm going to go through a, just a part of their flag with them so you can kind of get a, a sense of how this program works and how couples can try uh, and learn so much about each other and learn how to succeed with each other. So we'll, we'll do that when we come right back, all right? Okay, we have with us now Keith and Dana Stasser. Is that? Stay, sir. Stay, sir. Okay. And we're going to look at, at the Stasers. They're my next guinea pigs here. Okay, so we look at Keith. His is a fun guy. He likes being up here. Ah, look at me. Okay. Look at this. 188. <laughs> <laughs> this boy's on drugs, man. I'll tell you. <laughs> just loves fun. Just, <laughs> just, just great sense of humor. Life of the party. Bzzz, never a dull moment. Can you tell? Can you tell? Can you tell? 188. Okay. Um, 78, perfect. Um, fun, perfect people. We call these people the world's greatest entertainers or the most creative people. You know, they, they have fun, but they get it right. And they get it right and they have fun. Uh, then he has a P score of only 63, a control score of only 27. He barely has a pulse. <laughs> <laughs> Who just happens to be married to... Charts. 
<laughs> you know how rare that is to see someone with 200? 200, get her done. <laughs> His girls are... <laughs> so, Mr. 23 Control is married to Mrs. 203 Control. <laughs> what a shock! I can't believe it! You know. Oh, I'm gonna cry. <laughs> now, her next highest one is peace. So she's what we call a controlled peace woman, peace control woman. We call these people the world's greatest managers. Why? They get stuff done, but they get along with people. They get along with people, but they get stuff done. And that's her world. That's the world that she moves in. Okay? Now, whoops, wrong button. Um, now, uh, a key, we measure here is hard and soft. Look at the difference here. 89. He's very high on the soft side, very low on the hard side. Here's a guy who's very much a soft-hearted guy. Desires to be very relational. That's a huge jump, 89. Usually, and I don't know Keith, but usually guys like this, uh, if you force them to go into the hard side, you don't like the result. These, these are the guys, they get upset, they go psycho on you. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> They'll use a bomb to kill a fly. They will nuke the joint. I mean, they will go off on you. And the good news is you don't see it very often, but when you see it, it just freaks you out. And everybody says, well, why are you so upset? You don't have to get so upset, which only makes them more upset. <laughs> the reason they get so upset and the reason they so overreact usually in, in tough situations is they don't like being there. What they're trying to do is kick back to the soft side. They don't like being there. I think of the Incredible Hulk. Don't make me angry. <laughs> you won't like me when I'm angry, okay? Now, uh, Dana is a balancing woman. Um, she can be comfortable doing black and white as well as being very relational. Mm -hmm. It's harder for him to be confrontational and, and direct with people, but not for you, okay? No, which, not. which, which <laughs> <laughs> Not a problem. <laughs> uh, it's a lovely thing. Now, <laughs> the reason that can mess with you, and I don't know you guys, but a lot of couples, they can feel bad about that. Because our culture approves of hard men, like the first guy that was here, and soft women. We don't particularly care for tough women and soft men. And a lot of times, they, they, they can feel like there's something wrong. There's nothing wrong with you. This is exactly who God made you to be, and it's fine. Uh, you might find yourself in a situation where you'd be saying to him, why can't you tell the kids no? Why can't you call that guy and say that? Why can't you, why can't you be a man? Or whatever words you want to use. The thing is, it's because he doesn't like that. If it's confrontational, if it's hard, he will let you take over really quickly. And that's fine. There's nothing wrong with this. In fact, a woman who's a big control, tons of confidence, quick to action, you know, she just, Rah! you know, there's nothing wrong with that. It's great. Um, and a lot of times in churches, we criticize strong women, particularly women who, like to, who by nature are quick to make decisions, quick, 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 and to lead, and, and especially in tough situations. And we think, you know, you're, you're usurping authority. Baloney. <laughs> They're not usurping authority. See, we misunderstand that in this uh, nation, in this Western culture, because we think authority is tied to what you do. Whoever does the most has the authority. Wrong. In Eastern culture, they understand authority is not based on what you do. It's based on who you are. Mm -hmm. See, they have kings and that sort of thing. You know, we fought wars to get rid of kings. But they have kings and stuff. <laughs> and uh, um, they, whether a king is a great king or a bum, it's irrelevant. He's still the king. They understand that. It's based on who you are, not what you do. And, and we have a hard time with that. Um, even in, in a Eastern religious culture, a lot of their worship songs celebrate the Christ and, and the inherent uh, Godhead that was in Jesus. And, and they celebrate Christ for who he, who he is. In Western culture, our songs are all about, let's celebrate Jesus for what he's done. See, everything's about doing here. And we misunderstand. We think because a woman's doing a lot, she's taking, no, that has nothing to do with authority. Best example of that in the Old Testament is when you read the story about Joseph in, in uh, uh, Egypt. He, the Pharaoh put him in charge of everything. Joseph made every decision about everything. He called all the shots in Egypt. The Bible says there was that one thing that Joseph was not in charge for and responsible for. If you came into Egypt, you'd have swore Joseph was the Pharaoh. Yeah. 
But was Joseph the Pharaoh? Never. Never. Never at one time did the people even think he was the Pharaoh. Why? Because they got it. They, I don't know what the Pharaoh did. Sit around eating bonbons all day long. I have no idea. <laughs> but it was irrelevant. What you do does not make you the king. It's who you are. Okay? Is that, I don't know if that helps at all a lot, but it's good for you to be who you are. This is the way God wired you, Miss 203. Control. <laughs> and hurrah, tons of confidence. <laughs> I can do anything. And don't get in my way. Okay? Um, and, and she loves that. Now, Miss, you know, tough girl is married to Mr. Sincere at heart. He's a warm, fuzzy guy. You know, again, thoughtful, genuine, compassionate, likes to have fun, never a dull moment, <laughs> faithful, you know, and, and she's this quick to action, confident, optimistic, I can do anything, anything's possible, come on, follow me, da, 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 you know, that's, she loves it. Also, Sincere Heart also has the great sense of humor. Uh, bottom line, if she gets this fulfilled in her life, you just looking at these words makes you feel good, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. It, I'm telling you, it, you have to do it to see it. It's, it, I look at other people and I think that's nice, but when I see mine, I always go, <sighs> you know, I just, I love it. That's how powerful this stuff is. And the same for Keith. When he sees that, he just goes, yes, yes, that's me. This is wonderful. This is great. The problem is now, if you want to have a bad marriage, you just start criticizing him for these things. Always goofing around, you know, everything, you got to be real about everything. You never, every little goofing off, you know, you're not going to quit goofing off. You need to be more serious about life. What's the matter with you? Okay, you criticize her for always trying to be in charge. What's the matter with you? Ah, you always think everything's going to be great. Sometimes things are lousy. <laughs> <laughs> you need to be more real. What's the matter with you? And, and when you do that now, see, you could say that to me. It wouldn't hurt me because I don't have any of this. I just go, oh, all right, I can work on that. You do that to her, now you're tearing at her heart. You're tearing at who she is. A lot of times what you criticize the most in your spouse is what they happen to love the most in life. Mm -hmm. You don't even know it. They've never told you. And then you wonder why you're struggling and why you're hurting each other so much. This program will help you discover it. Let's take a look at uh, Dana and Keith's rules for feeling loved. Dana's rule for feeling loved, tons of confidence. Uh, encourage and release me to go to the next level. Mm -hmm. she, she wants you to approve of her being this big control getter done chick. <laughs> that's her number one rule for feeling loved. That's right. You know that number, and she's got number two, three, four, and five, by the way. She hasn't done all this yet, okay? That's right. But you walk this through, and you come up with her five rules for feeling loved. <sighs> tell you, it's impossible for her not to feel happy if you respect those in her life. And for Keith, um, sincere at heart, his number one rule is I need you to sincerely appreciate me. And when he says sincere, it means to be real. You've got to be very, very real with him. Uh, again, these guys who have sincere, they can smell phony a mile away. Mm -hmm. They can tell when you're being, you know, just blowing smoke at them. You know, the, the more real you are with him and you appreciate him, the more he'll come to life. And again, he also has two, three, four, and five. And again, you get these five rules in their lives, and they, these people will come to life. And they will uh, succeed at a level. And check it out. Neither one of them has to change. And they can be completely happy. I believe you could stick virtually any two people in the world together. This is not eHarmony.com. Okay? <laughs> we do not care about that. This isn't trying to find, you know, why are we the most alike? It doesn't matter if you have exactly the same stuff or you're totally different. Bottom line is if you will respect, honor, and encourage right. each other. Just these five things. Stop and think about that. I can, you do this program, I can show you five things. If you will do those five things, you will have a happy wife. Take it to the bank. You do these five things, I can show you how you can have an absolutely thrilled and encouraged happy man in your life. But a lot of us don't even know what they are. We never talk about it. That's the power of this program. Uh, all you have to do is, is when, when you do the program, again, you just have to go online and enter the code. Um, uh, now, when you buy my book... Where's, where's the copy of the book? There's the copy of the book over here. <clears throat> Very professional on the floor here. Okay, here we go. Here's a copy of my book. <laughs> Very professional, yes. Anyway, 
Uh, it's blue, see? And uh, uh, it's called Discovering Your Heart with the Flag Page. And when you get the book, it comes with a code in the back. And you take the code, and you go online, and you enter the sin. Now, you need one code for each person. So if you want to get the book, and you want one for your spouse, you'll have to buy, a co buy the code. The codes are only $10. They're very affordable. And uh, it's certain for 10 bucks, man, to find out what you can find in this thing is absolutely life-changing. And I'll tell you who this is really great for, teenagers. Mm, yeah. Nobody's more confused about who they are in life than a teenager. <laughs> and unlike an adult who wants you to understand them, teenagers don't want you to understand them. <laughs> it's true. They're blowing smoke all the time trying to confuse you. You get this program, and you'll find out. And this, is, this can be life-changing. I had a man who came up to me about a year and a half ago. And he looked at me and says, I want you to know something. You saved our family. Wow. I, said, I said, what do you mean? He said, we, we had a daughter who was so different from us. We never understood her. And we were always at war with her. And she was always in trouble. And she was always depressed. And she tried to commit suicide. Raised in the church all her life. Tried to take her life. We were so heartbroken. He said, we heard about this, this program and, and, and your book. And he says, we did this with her. And we came up with her five rules to feel loved. And when I saw her five rules to feel loved, he says, I wept. Because I realized I had been breaking all five of those all the time. And he says, and sincerely, Pastor, he says, I never knew it. I never knew. But when I saw that, I determined I'm going to start respecting what this young girl needs. He said the change in her was dramatic. And it is. When you start giving people what they truly need in life, the change is powerful and dramatic. He says that she did a turnaround in her, her attitude changed. She was up and positive. She's in school today. She's even thinking about going into the ministry. That was the power of understanding her heart and recognizing who she is. There's lots of reasons why we struggle with this today. Lots of psychological and sociological reasons that I talk a little bit about in the book, but it doesn't matter. Who cares why we're, we're, where we're at? You and I don't have the power to change our culture. Just so that you know, our culture, the way it is today, has given people, we've, we've given birth to entire generations now who are completely clueless about who they are. It wasn't like that for a very, very long time throughout history, but it is that way now. This program will help you to center on the inside, understand who you are, who God made you to be. And I'll tell you who really was impacted by this program and fell in love with it big time was me. <laughs> because all my life I had been criticized for doing and being who I was. Are you kidding? A pastor? You know what's on my A box? Good on stage. <laughs> Fun. Loves people. Inspiration. You know, I love to make people laugh. And, the, and, and the, the static I got all my life, you can't do that. You can't, you can't get up in the pulpit and start goofing around like that. What's the matter with you? You need to be, you don't always gotta be in front of people. You need to be more humble. <laughs> All from men who did not have any of those things in their hearts. Amen. They didn't have it. I had it. Something's wrong with me. All my adult life. I spent the majority of my time. I'm a, I'm a musician. I'm very good at what I do. I was also a video producer. Uh, and churches loved hiring me because I was in charge of their music programs and helped do their multimedias and stuff. And, and I said, here's a guy who loved to be in front of people, inspire people. I spent the majority of my day in a dark room with a computer or a keyboard. Na 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 And the thing is, I'm very good at it. And I was told all my life, all that matters is you're good at what you do. Wrong. It's important that you love what you do. And when I saw that printout, I was heartbroken. And I said, oh, yeah, that's me. It's too bad. <laughs> Seriously, I thought, that, I thought that was what was wrong with me. And, and Larry, the guy who developed this program, was showing this to me. He says, no, no, no. This is what's right about you. I said, no, it's what everybody hates about me. He said, well, I don't know what they hate about you, but this is who you are. And you need to be this. And I remember taking it to the senior pastor where I worked. And he looked, he says, is this really how you feel? He says, yeah. I said, the man, you need to change your life. And, you need, and he helped me launch into what I'm doing today. And now I'm touching millions of people's lives, doing all the stuff everybody told me I couldn't do. So 
to all those people who said I couldn't do it. <laughs> all right, that's what I got to say. All right, thanks, you guys. God bless you. When we come back, we're going to do the Yo Mama session, the number one key to incredible sex. See you in a few minutes, all right? <laughs>